Now that you know the math and working principle of k-means clustering, let us now look at a real example and code this algorithm for ourselves. Note that a basic understanding of our programming language is required for this tutorial. We have real data of three different species of flower named iris. These are iris setosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica. In the given data, four attributes of 150 flowers have been measured. These attributes are the petal length and petal width, and the sepal length and the sepal width. And this is the Excel file that bears all the data. So as one can see, there are about 150 flower measurements here, and each row represents one flower. One, like four different measurements of one single flower. So looking at the attributes, we have four attributes. That is the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. The last column here represents the classes of which species does this flower measurement belongs to. So we have data against all these three different species. And all in all, as mentioned earlier, there are about um, one, 150 uh, measurements of the flower minus the top header. So they're like about 150 measurements. So the question is, given these four different attributes of 150 flowers, can you predict which species does each flower measurement belong to? All right, so now let's start up with some programming experience in R and we assume that you have some basic working knowledge uh, about our language. So we are going to learn, we are going to run k-means algorithm on the iris data we've been talking about. So first what I need to do is I need to read, um, read uh, the data. So this is what I'm going to use, read.table. And then I'm go going to insert the working directory where my file has been saved in between these two um, inverted colons. So by the way, the for format that I'll be using um, in this particular example is .txt and not the CSV format. So it's basically the same except for that. Um, so this is the format that I'm using except for the fact that, you know, now it's, 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 it's in TX, TXT format. And just like before, we now have different four different attributes and the class, like, so there are five attributes and against each attribute, there are five different columns and each of the colon colon is, uh, separated by spaces. So this particular row is called our header and the rest is called the body of the table. So uh, we can go ahead and place the directory of our file. And since we need to let R know that we have uh, the top row is the header of the file, what we will do is um, type header equal to true. So this is how R knows that, okay, fine, um, to consider the top row as the header. Secondly, we also need um, R to know that our columns are separated by spaces. So in order to make R know that, this is how we do it. That is, we write SCP, like for separation, equal to, and then we write um, two um, inverted colons, colons, and that says it that. Um, one more thing, I want this entire thing to be saved in a variable. So let's call that variable to be iris. So I'll save it um, in my iris variable and this entire thing is going to be saved. So there we go. Now let's view um, how does that appear in R. So in order to do that, sorry, this is how I'll write it. I'll write view iris and as you can see that um, iris appears, the whole thing appears um, in this particular format in R and it's saved in the memory. So let's close this and come back to the console. Okay, so now we know that everything has been transferred to R. We now want to see that how does the data originally look like? So let's say um, plot um, iris is the variable that we will be using it in. And what I'll next do is um, I will take um, any two of the attributes to form my x and y axis. So in this case, let me take the petal length 
and um, the pedal width. So remember, this is just like the heart rate and the age of the example that we discussed in the last video. So we'll take pedal length and pedal width. And uh, so I'm going to close all the brackets now. Yep. And now let's see how does the original data in these two feature spaces looks like. This is how it goes. So we've got pedal length, got pedal um, pedal width and pedal length. And this is how the data looks like. Initially, the algorithm doesn't know what, what cluster does each of the data point belong to. And it'll know once we run k-means on it. So let's close it down and let's proceed. Also know that um, um, going back to the iris table, know that k-means um, is a form of unsupervised learning. And so we really don't need this column. I mean, this is for our own knowledge that fine, we know that which of the row belongs to which particular species, but k-means really doesn't know it. And it uses k-means um, algorithm to come up with the, uh, with the optimal centroid and boundary position, just as we had discussed in the last video. So what I'll do is that I'll remove this column. Um, in order to do that, what I'll do is first I'll save my, uh, I'll form a new variable. Let's call it iris um, features. And I'll save iris to it so that we don't, um, you know, uh, remove the original data. And then I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to null the class column of the iris um, table. And how will I do that? Well, I'll just simply set it to null. So I will take iris features, which is actually a duplicate of iris. I'll take the class um, attribute of it, which is actually our output, and I'll nullify it. So let's see um, how does our iris.features not looks like. So now you can see there is no fifth class column here. So now once we're done, let's go ahead and run um, the k-means algorithm. So it's very easy to do it in R. So because everything, since this is a statistical software, much of the work has already been done for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So we want to be running k-means algorithm. And in order to run this algorithm, we need two features like A and B. So let's, for the sake of understanding, A and B. So A over here is the data that you want um, the, the algorithm to work on. In our case, it is iris.features. B is how many clusters do you want? Now, as we had already discussed, this is the um, this is a choice that you have to make. In this case, I already know that there are three species of flowers. So I'll put three. There are some some rules as well, but and some other other ways to guess this number out. But we won't go in detail in that um, to, in that direction. So let's just take three for now. And also, let me say if this result um, result of k-means in let's say a variable called result. And um, I'll save this um, here. Okay. So here we go. Now let's write. Let's see what results have in, inside it. So when you pick up result, k means output several um, several possible things actually, and these all of them are very important. So the first thing that you see over here is cluster means, and what this is is it is the mean of each of the attribute in each of the clusters. So say for instance, the mean sepal length in cluster one is six point eight five and so on and so forth for the rest of them. This is clustering vector, and it states that in which particular cluster does each of the data point belong to. So um, these have been clustered accordingly. So what you can see over here is that the first um, values belong to cluster two, the second you know, kind of belong to three, one, so on and so forth, and you know, each and every point in which cluster it belongs to. And this is this has to do deal with remember the formula that I just shown you, the summation of the squares by cluster. 
And finally, these are some of the components um, of the k-means algorithm that you can make use of. Like, say for instance, um, let's say take size, say for instance. So what I'll do is that I'll write results, the variables where I save the results of my k-means. And what I'll do is that I'll take list all the sign indicates which feature of the results do you want to go ahead with, and I'll write size. So this shows the size of each of the clusters. So my first cluster has 38 um, flower samples in it, the second has 50, and the rest has 62. Now I'll go ahead and uh, once I have the results, what I'm more interested in knowing is that how, like visually, how do I see the clusters? So after the clustering has been done. So in order to do that, I'll go ahead and write plot. And similarly, then I will go ahead and write the, actually an easier way to do that is take the first thing where we had already written everything. So it's pretty much the same, except for now I want the coloring to be a little different. So I want each of the uh, cluster, uh, each of the data points to be clustered to be colored, um, this call represents color. So I want each of the data point to be colored based on which of the clusters they belong to. And in order to do that, I'll write something like so. So let's see what we get. Uh, it seems we messed somewhere. Okay, it's not clutter, clutter is clusters. Okay, so it seems that k-means has done a very good job in clustering the data points in three different clusters, three different species. So this is the first set of clusters, the second set of cluster, and the third, and it seems that all of them have are quite distinguishable, except there's some overlap over here, but overall k-means has done a very good job in uh, placing them in different clusters. Well, this is what k-means thought in what all clusters they should be placed at. Now let's see, um, in actuality, which um, cluster did each data point actually belong to? Because remember, we had that last variable called class for our own sake, for our own knowledge. Um, so let's do the same thing, but now instead of results, I'll write the original data set, which was iris, and instead of cluster, I'll write class. So let's look at, um, and this is the clustering based on the original data set. And as we can see, the clusters are almost exactly the same, except for probably some points may have deferred, but the original clustering is very similar to the one that has been done by k-means.